Hello and welcome to Physiology Open. Try to solve this question on mechanism of action of hormones. In the question, there are two statements. First statement is an assertion and the second statement is the reason for the first statement. Now you have to choose from the following five options. You can pause the video and think about the answer. We will come back to the question at the end of the video again. Okay, now let's discuss about the concepts on mechanism of action of hormones. Action of hormones is dependent on downstream signaling pathways which it activates once it binds to its receptors. The receptors may be present on the cell membrane, in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus. There are three broad categories of cell membrane hormone receptors. Ion channel linked receptors, G protein linked receptors and enzyme linked receptors. One thing you should note here is that the hormone receptor is not just a structural protein. Rather, it is linked to other proteins which are either ion channels, G proteins or enzymes. Once the hormone binds to its receptors, there is change in the function of the proteins which are linked to the receptor. Now, once this happens, it leads to either opening or closing of ion channels affecting the movement of ions across the cell membrane and uh, phosphorylation of some other proteins which may be associated with the receptor or they may be other intracellular proteins. Now one fundamental thing you should know is that adding of phosphate that is phosphorylation and removal of phosphate that is dephosphorylation of proteins is one mechanism which leads to activation and inactivation of many proteins inside the cell. That means the activity of the protein depends on the state of its phosphorylation. The phosphorylation is brought about by kinases while the phosphatases dephosphorylate the protein. The hormones affect the function of the intracellular proteins by activating or inhibiting the kinases which in turn affects the state of phosphorylation of the protein. Now generally it is a combination of these events which happen intracellularly when the hormone binds to its receptors. Okay, now we will focus on what intracellular events take place when a ligand binds to G protein linked receptors. These receptors have an extracellular binding site to which the hormone binds and an intracellular cytoplasmic tail region to which G proteins may bind. G proteins act as a switch and functionally couple the receptor to their target enzymes or ion channels. These G proteins or heterotrimeric GTP binding proteins is a set of three proteins G alpha, J beta and G gamma which are present as an inactive complex bound to membrane just near the hormone receptor. The alpha subunit that is G alpha is bound to GDP in inactive state. When the hormone binds to its receptor, Receptor interacts with the G proteins and the GDP bound to alpha subunit is replaced by GTP which is now said to be in active state. This replacement of GDP with GTP causes alpha subunit to dissociate from beta and gamma subunits and move and associate with some other proteins causing either opening or closing of ion channels or they affect the activity of enzymes like adenylcyclase and phospholipase C. G proteins which stimulate adenyl cyclase activity are known as G stimulatory proteins that is G alpha S while that which inhibits their activity are known as inhibitory G proteins that is G alpha I. The G proteins which affect the activity of phospholipase C are known as GQ proteins. The effect of the hormone on the cell depends on the type of the receptor it binds. For example same hormone in one cell may have a receptor which is linked to stimulatory G proteins while in other cells it may have a receptor which is linked to inhibitory G proteins. Now by the change in the state of these G proteins second messenger systems or we can say signaling pathways are activated. When adenylcyclase enzyme is activated it causes the conversion of ATP to CAMP. CAMP in turn causes the activation of CAMP dependent protein kinase A which causes phosphorylation of some proteins or enzymes in the cell. Now these proteins may be involved in biological reactions or this phosphorylated protein in turn may activate or inhibit other proteins which are involved in cellular reactions. So ultimately this process affects the function of the cells. In addition protein kinase A can also increase or decrease the transcription of some genes. 
close to these genes is present a region known as CAMP responsive element region of DNA. A subunit of protein kinase A moves to the nucleus and phosphorylates another protein, the CMP responsive element binding protein that is CREP protein which then binds to CRE and alters transcription of the genes where CRE is present. So in this pathway CAMP acts as a second messenger. Let's now see second messengers if phospholipase C is activated. When phospholipase C is activated by GQ proteins, it causes breakdown of the membrane phospholipid phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 biphosphate into IP3 that is inositol triphosphate and diacyl glycerol. IP3 acts on IP3 receptors present on endoplasmic reticulum. This receptor itself is a ligand gated calcium channel. When IP3 binds, it opens up causing release of calcium ions from endoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol. The calcium ions in turn bind with calmodulin causing activation or inhibition of calmodulin dependent protein kinases. Diacylglycerol activates protein kinase C which then phosphorylate other proteins just as we saw for adenylcyclase dependent kinase. So in this case inositol triphosphate, diacylglycerol and calcium are second messengers. But now the question comes once activated the hormone action should end also right? By simple logic you can tell that will occur when hormone dissociates from its receptor. Well I may argue here that uh, how will that help if the hormone has led to so many events downstream? G protein is still active, phosphorylated proteins are still active. Well apart from the dissociation of the hormone from the receptor there are a number of hierarchical ways in which the activity ends. We will see the example of adenylcyclase pathway. One way is that even if hormone is present, the receptor itself may be inactivated. Then uh, G proteins also are inactivated. This G alpha subunit of G proteins has inherent GTPase activity which converts GTP to GDP. When the activated G protein binds to adenylcyclase, the GTPase activity is activated causing conversion of GTP to GDP. And you know that once G alpha binds to GDP, it binds to beta and gamma subunits and becomes inactive again. So only for a very brief period, G proteins remain in activated state. This also inactivates adenylcyclase. Then uh, CMP is converted to 5-AMP by the enzyme phosphodiesterase. Again, one may argue that uh, protein kinase A and other proteins which have been activated by it are still in phosphorylated state. Well, the cells are phosphatases which dephosphorylate these proteins. Okay, now let's come back to our original question. In this question, assertion is a true statement. We have seen that CAMP pathway activates protein kinase A which affects intracellular proteins as well as moves to nucleus to affect genetic expression. Reason is also a correct statement because PKA activates CREP protein which then binds to CRE region and affects genetic expression. And that is how the adenylcyclase pathway affects gene expression. So the answer in this case is first option. Both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation for A. Okay, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do not forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.